presents this program in color. Living color. Hold it. I think you're going to like this picture. Ready? Go. One. Jim Tell is Baseball American about a half hour. Your calls, plenty to cover. Where do we start? Right in the beginning. A very, very good place to start. How you doing, everybody? Murph with you from now until 2. And as always, I'm driven to you by Chevy Drive Chicago. Com. One hour away from my friends from Rental Max, RentalMax.com, Tour of the Week. And at 12.30, Jim Callis, Senior Editor over at the great publication, BaseballAmerica.com. All right. Let's see. Good news for the Cubs? <laughs> Didn't lose last night. You know what? I, I don't know if it was good news or not. It's always great to get a uh, rain out a day off when things aren't going well. But then we'll talk about where they plugged it into the schedule. And when that day rolls around, you go, ah, oh, geez, we could have used an off day today. On what? A June 22nd, an off day. Got to fly down for one day to Atlanta. But I think it was better to get that day off yesterday. And the White Sox, who would have thought after winning the first game, of that uh, rare, it's rare uh, to have a four-game series that you would drop three in a row to Oakland. Here's what I'd like to do today. It's Mike Murphy with you till two. What I'd like to do today is invite you to gather around the radio. Oh, you know what, Jay Zawoski? We should reload yesterday's end of the show text question uh, powered by U.S. Cellular. Jay, do you remember how we phrased that yesterday? We were talking, uh, the news had come through, you know, on Gordon Beckham, right? Right. Late in the show, how's that free food the Blackhawks sent over? Delicious. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Blackhawks. That's okay. Right. Uh, we were talking about Gordon Beckham, and if I recall, how did we phrase that text question? Where will, when it's all said and done, when it's where, all, no, what, I like that. That sounds what like, position will Gordon Beckham when it's have played the most done. or be known for? I like that. When it's all said and done, what position will Gordon Beckham, you know, when they're getting that uh, the Hall of Fame plaque ready? Right. Right? Mm -hmm. You know, like Rhino. Right. They, you know, they're similar type type guys. So, yesterday, Sox fans, you surprised me, and baseball fans, anybody following baseball, will ask Jim Callis this also. So, text me very quickly. I have a Cub text poll coming up uh, after we look to about a half hour on this. Where will Gordon Beckham have played most of his major league games when it's all when it's all said and done? Said and done. Ah, oh, that's a great phrase. All right, text me right now the number two if you think. Second base will be where he spends most of his time on that Hall of Fame plaque. 18 years, second baseman. Or the number three for third base. Or the letter S for Superman. Sandberg. No, shortstop. <laughs> 67011. The number two, the number three, or the letter S as in shortstop. Where will Beckham have played most of his games when it's all said and done? 67011. Our text uh, method. All right. Now, the Cubs and Sox right now, I think it's fair to say both are struggling. Okay? Is that fair? Remember Davey Nelson? Remember Davey Nelson? He used to be a first base uh, coach. He's still around. Base. Great guy. He was the Cubs announcer for a couple of years. And any time a pitcher or anybody was struggling, scuffling, I remember Davey Nelson. It was sort of funny the first few five, ten times. But all year, he's struggling like a duck in the desert. He's struggling like... That's what the Cubs and Sox are doing right now. Struggling like ducks in the desert. Thank you, Davey Nelson. Now, I want to ask you, Sox fans and you Cub fans, about our managers right now. I love both our managers. Overall, let's be honest, we've all seen the worst. We've all, we don't have to go through the list. We're not listing the bad managers. But in your mind, I don't care which side of town you're on, you know that these two guys, they have faults. Sometimes you want to get their ass out of town. But let's be honest. These are two of the best managers this town has ever, ever had. Especially simultaneously, maybe go back to what? Go back to uh, Leo DeRocher and uh, Eddie Stanky, almost for you all-time fans. Now, here's what I want to ask you. You've been watching your guy. You've been watching Ozzy. You've been watching Lou. How do they look to you these days? 
Do they look to you like they're getting frustrated? Do they look to you like they're not happy? Do they look to you like, well, quite frankly, that they're going to pop? They're going to pop. And I'm not talking about popping the cork at the umpire. Though I'd like to see a little more of that, frankly, on both sides of town. Both Ozzy and Lou. I guess this politically correct world and TV and the commissioner, well, either that or these two guys are Velcroed, crazy glued to the bench. But I want to hear from Sox fans and Cub fans. Six four four six seven six seven. Let's phrase it this way. Sox fans, do you think Ozzy Gian will still be here? Now we did a little research. We being Jay Zawaski did all the research. Thanks, Jay. Ozzy Gian's deal, his contract, is signed through twenty twelve, two thousand twelve, whichever uh, phrase there you prefer. Ozzy is signed through two thousand twelve. I want to ask Sox fans. Do you think Ozzy will still be here at the end of the 2012 contract? Cub fans, same question, different duration. Lou right now, they extended him. He's through 2010. So Cub fans, same question. Do you believe, do you think, do you feel that Lou Pinella will still be managing the Cubs October of 2010? Ozzie Gian, Sox fans, do you believe Ozzy will still be here? End of contract, end of 2012. Have you looked at these guys lately? Neither looks happy. Neither guy looks happy. Now, you know what, Murph? I'll take that money any day. I don't have to be happy. I know that. I know that angle. I understand that. It's a different world we're talking about. Vuk is on your side. I'll guarantee it is. Jeff Vukovic. Vuk for all your insurance needs. I've been telling you about Vuk forever. Someday you'll know Vuk because everybody knows Vuk. He is Murph's nationwide insurance agent of the year. Park Ridge family guy, solid as a rock. You want stability in your insurance program? Vuk is your guy. Six four four six seven six seven. You look at Ozzy. He looks fine. You look at Lou. Lou don't look fine to me. Everybody's weight vacillates up and down. Lou doesn't look fine. He does. The weight is back. He looks grumpy. He looks puffy. He doesn't seem like right now anything's going to phase him. I'm not saying he's mailing it in. I would never say that. I'm not saying that he's lost the, uh, the enthusiasm. I wouldn't say that either. But right now, I don't like the way Lou looks. I don't like the way Lou's handling himself. It's not the Lou that was here a year ago or two years ago. All right. How about this? If, if someone asked you, and I, I failed this test, Jay Zawaski said, Murph, how many years do you think Lou pinella has been managing in the big leagues? I said, oh, boy, you know, the red 15, 16 years? Jay goes, no, look at this. Is this right, Jay Zawaski? He's been managing, 20, he's, he has managed 22 years in the major leagues. You didn't doctor this up, did you? No, it shocked me when I read it, too. 1986, the Yankees threw 88. The Reds, 90, 91, 92. The Mariners, 93 through 2002. Tampa Bay Devil Rays, there was a disaster. 03, 04, 05. Cubs, 07, this, 07 08, 09. He's been managing for 22 years. I don't know his checkbook or his finances, and it's not my department. All I know is what we read. And he's been, listen to this, listen to some of the dough that Lou Pinella has, and good for Lou, contracted for. How about this? He has a contract right now with the Cubs this year at $4 million. 07, 08, 09, 3.3 times 3, so $10 million, there's $14 million. But listen to this, the Tampa Bay Devil Rays. He signed a four-year deal there at $13 million. Seattle, astronomical numbers. What I'm leading up to is, what's the motivation of Lou Pinella to stick around? Now, let the record show. I am not advocating that either of these guys will be released or let go. I'm looking at this from the other direction, and that's why the question is phrased this way. Sox fans, will Ozzie Gian still be managing the Sox at the end of his contract, 2012? Cub fans, do you think your guy, Lou, will still be here at the end of 2010? And I'm not advocating 
or implying or even forecasting that either of them will be let go. I think their bosses love them. I think that Kenny and Jerry Reinsdorf love Ozzy and will do everything they can to make him happy. I think the same thing on the north side. I believe Crane Kenny and whoever the hell owns the Cubs right now is very, very happy with Lou. But these two guys are very similar in many, many ways. And one is they both have the short fuse. Number two, they both will tell someone, in my, in my opinion, in a minute, hey, bye-bye, I'm out of here, whatever, work it out, I'll be fine. I'll be stunned if either of these guys, much less both of them, fulfill the end of these contracts. It's, I don't think things are going the way they want it right now. I don't know if they're unhappy with their players. I don't know if they're unhappy with their bosses. I don't know if they're unhappy with the fans or the media or what the hell, but these two guys don't look happy right now. Now, if you're not happy at work, you know, you don't have the ability, most of us, to say, okay, bye-bye. These guys do. It's a different world. And then the next logical question, who is the next manager of the Cubs and who's the next manager of the Sox? Cubs names? Bob Brenly. Alan Trammell managed three years with the Tigers. Ryan Sandberg. Sox fans, your names, Joey Cora. What's that? Oh, that's right. Joey, Joey leaves when Ozzy leaves. Those two guys. I don't know. Don't you think Joey wants to be a manager himself? Yes. But he would never, in my opinion, replace Ozzy. He'd find it his own gig. And you, how long do you think Ozzy would be out of work if he wanted to go somewhere else? He'd be back working next year if not sooner contractually i suppose that they could hold him to it you know whatever i don't know how those escape clauses work or you know no compete or all that but i'll tell you one thing i would get a job in a minute lou if he wanted one would probably get another one but see i, I think lou is just about had it let's get to the oh how's hey tell you what how's our text results going there jay we have Ask you, baseball fans, Sox fans certainly with a vested interest, when it's all said and done, the number two second base, the number three third base, or the letter S for shortstop at 67011. U.S. Cellular drives that. Where will Gordon Beckham, when it's all said and done, have played his most amount of games in the major leagues on his Hall of Fame plaque? Will it say second baseman, third baseman, or shortstop? Jay, at the end of yesterday, and we only did it for about 10 minutes, I was a little shocked. Now, I haven't looked at our new numbers. You, you haven't been a minute, right? You got some new yep. up? All right. Yesterday, we finished with a runaway second base, 58%. Third base, 25%. Shortstop, 17%. But we only did it for about 10, 15 minutes at the end of the show. Are we uh, getting some responses? Yes, and they're similar. Really? But not as runaway so ah, far. Okay. Second base is 46%. Mm -hmm. Third base, 36%. Mm -hmm. And shortstop, 18%. It, it's very similar. Very similar. Very, very close. Right. Now, let the record show. This is not where do you want him. Right. Where will he be? Where when will he have done. played the most games? Well, let me tell you right now. You can take that third base and stick it in your hind pocket. Because he's not going to be a third baseman long term. He's got too much athletic ability. He will ultimately be a second baseman or a shortstop. Let's go to the phones. Six four four six seven six seven. We'll reload a Cubs text question there in a minute, Jay. Uh, Moline, Illinois, Quad City, Nathan. Hello, Nathan. How's it going? I'm fine. Welcome to Chicago, man. All the way from the Quad Cities. All right, Nathan. We have a lot of topics here. You want to talk about Lou Pinella here? Lou, better ha Lou and the Cubs better have a cardiologist on uh, retainer because that dude's going to blow. Does he? Does he look to you like? Why? Why do you? What, what's your visual observation, uh, or what makes he, you say that, Nathan? He just he's. Uh, we haven't had any uh, Louisms. We haven't had any explosions this year. I don't think maybe one. Uh huh. But I think the big one's coming because he doesn't look. Like, I think he's penting. It's penting all up inside with. Uh, either the hitting doesn't work or the bullpen doesn't work. Right. Zambrana goes off in left field throwing baseballs. Uh, Let me ask you this, Nathan. Let me jump in with you because I like your angle. Number one, to me, he doesn't look anywhere near as healthy as he has on and off in the past. Number two, he's mad about something. He's irritated about something, but yet he's trying to uh, internalize it, as they now say. He's trying to not pop the cork. And I'm not talking about kicking dirt on the ump. 
you know what I'm saying. I just think the guy's ready to pop, and I hope, like you say, it's not something where they got to call 911. Yeah, I think, um, uh, you know, everyone says Milton Bradley was a great addition, and he'll bring a lot of... Uh, um, uh, do you think Milton? Team. Do you think Milton Bradley is uh, affecting Lou Pinella's health negatively? I don't think it helps. <laughs> no, it probably doesn't. Nathan, thanks for checking in, buddy. Six forty-four, sixty-seven, sixty-seven. You know the area code. Hey, for green office supplies that are environmentally friendly, call Chrissy for your free catalog of Illinois paper and copier. Six three zero six seven nine nine zero nine zero. Text results have uh, settled in at. Second base now, right? Second base, 44% of you say that's where Beckham will have played the most games and it's all said and done. Tell you what, Jay, throw out third base. Let's reload it, all right? Because I'm saying right now, it's my text poll question. Third base out. He ain't playing third base. Text me right now the number two or the letter S for shortstop. Reload it all. Clean the etch sketch Turn the etch sketch upside down. Shake it, 67011. Two or S. As in shortstop Superman Sandberg, where will he have played the most games when it's all said and done? We have a uh, Carlos Marmel, Angel Guzman text coming up for you Cub fans. Back in a flash, Jim Callis at the bottom of the hour. We'll get to all your phone calls. He's at Baseball America. Tool of the week, top of the hour. Lots to do. Hope you're having a fun, feckless Friday. It's Murpho, driven to you by Chevy Drive Chicago.com. Welcome back, Murph. Ten minutes away from Baseball America's senior editors, Jim Cal. Let's get right back to the phones. Tool of the week at 1 o'clock, my friends, at Reynoldmags, Reynoldmags.com. Lou Pinella, 66 years old, 22 years as a manager. To me, looks like he's ready to erupt. Or, you know what? Maybe he's ready to say, hey, chuck it. C-H-U-C-K. Just chuck it all. You know, I wouldn't be surprised. And Ozzy Gann, Ozzy will do anything. I'm not saying that these guys are going to be asked to leave. It's the opposite. I think if either of these guys goes bye-bye, it's going to be on their own volition, on, the, on their own design. Ozzie Guillen signed through 2012, 45 years old, in his sixth year of managing. Who would be the potential replacements for Ozzie Guillen? Well, Joey Corr, but that'll never happen. Joey will get his own job somewhere or follow Ozzie to the next one, but he would never replace his buddy. He would never accept that. Uh, Buddy Bell, right? This guy, Buddy Bell, he's one of the White Sox uh, minor league coordinators or player development, whatever. They all got titles. Buddy Bell, 57 years old. We pulled his numbers. I had forgotten. He had three years managing the Tigers, three years managing the Rockies, three years managing the Royals. He's sitting right there on their uh, organizational flow chart. Cubs got Bob Brenly uh, up in the booth. Alan Trammell, three years managing the Tigers. Ryan Sandberg down now at Double A. And you know what? I wouldn't rule out this Bob Brenly being a candidate for a lot of teams, including both sides of town. But let's go to the phone lines. See what the fans are talking about here. Fans talking to fans. Phil is a car phone. Hello, Felipe. Phil. Hello, Phil. Hey. Hey. Hello. Yes. How you doing? You're on the air. How you doing, Phil? Uh, I'm doing well. Good. Um, I want to address the Aussie question. Yeah. But uh, before I do that, I want to say something, uh, and I hope all the listeners will, will take this to heart. Of all the people in Chicago media, you are the quintessential uh, gentleman. You are, you are never mean to anybody. You are always right on target. And you are a kind person. Well, Phil, thank you. Everybody in, in uh, radio around the world has their own style. I appreciate the kind words. What do you think? Uh, who's going to be the guy that is least likely to fulfill his contract here, Ozzy or, or Lou? Well, here's the thing about Ozzy and trying Ryan stuff is, 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 you know, maybe, you know, fatally flawed, mm -hmm. loyal to everybody. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, he has never fired anybody. Um, Ozzy has won a world to Name the last uh, uh, baseball manager that won a World Series to got fired. Well, I don't think, again, neither of these guys is going to be let go. I believe it's going to be on their own free will. One of these guys, if not both, I just see them. Neither's happy. Neither looks like they're enjoying what they're doing right now. And in, in that walk of life, unlike many walks of life, you know, they are, these guys are able to walk away if they feel like it uh, and, and work out the deal. All right, let me tell you this. The final game at the old Comiskey Park, mm -hmm. I was there. And when the game ended, 
Ozzy ran over and stole second base. He picked it up and <laughs> took it away with him. Yeah. I think, I think he, he's, a, he's a White Sox forever. And I don't think that Jerry Reinsdorf is going to fire. No, 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 no. Don't, don't keep saying that because someone's going to get in the car, Phil. And they're going to hear you say that and think that that was our topic. And, and so I'm talking about, will Ozzy or Lou ever just say to their bosses, you know, I can't take it anymore. I got I to gotta get out. That's, that's more the direction. Hey, Phil, thanks for the kind words. I appreciate it very much. Okay, buddy? Good luck. Thank, thank you, sir. Let's go to uh, Lake Bluff, Ron. Hello, Ron. Hey, Murphy, the greatest. I caught you during Cubs rain delay last night. You were on a bit there. <laughs> I you was? There. Oh, no. Oh. You yeah, know what? I got tired of watching. I turned it off. One of the uh, uh, clips over the years, the, uh, the HBO and the yeah, Fox. That no, wasn't the HBO one, but I saw that last year. You're, you're the queen of uh, Central Cubs fan. Well, thank you. I'm, I'm 45. Yes. I'm a Cubs fan to begin with. All right. Fox fan, secondly. Ozzy, you're mm -hmm. on the money. Ozzy will coach as long as Ozzy wants to. He has that decision. It, it's not the same for Lou. Lou will be. He'll, he'll either quit, but he will be fired. Ozzy won't be. Ozzy won a championship. Ozzy's a golden boy. Lou, Lou had a brain fart last week, but that's whole, he's a whole other tool right there. But does Lou, <laughs> tool of the week, 1 o'clock, but does Lou look happy and healthy to you right now to me? He doesn't. He looks very oh. frustrated. Why would you think that he would not just chuck it, C-H-U-C-K, chuck it and walk away? After this contract, he will. But they'll be helping him out the door. Thanks, Ron. Bob Brian Lee should fly right in there. Well, I'm, I'm these mistakes he made last week. We uh, did. Brain fart. He looked like one of the golden yeah. girls. All right. Hey, hey, thanks, Ron. Appreciate it very much. One of the golden girls. Jay, been under radio here since 1992. On and off around the... I, I think that's the first reference ever to the golden girls. I hope so, actually. <laughs> <laughs> the golden jet? Quite yeah, often. Golden, golden right. Richards? Not, right. not too often. Hey, how about gold? How about white? White trucks. How about red? Red stripes. The town group dot com. My guys, they do it right. The big mechanical projects, sophisticated HVAC piping chillers, replace, repair, upgrade. They do it right. The town group dot com. West town, north town, southwest town, and northwest town. Back in a flash, Murphy Palooza, Rich from Rogers Park. I'll get you up next. Tell you what, hey Rich, real quick, I'm not supposed to take a call. I'm running late. How are you? It's Murph, buddy. Very good. Give me a give me a Reader's Digest, quickie. Go ahead, buddy. Well, what's coming up? Are you? Am I on? Or am I talking <laughs> okay. to you? Okay. Back in a flash, Sports Radio 670 to score. All right, real quick, text me right now verbally. Okay. All right, can you do that? Can yes. you text me verbally? <laughs> Radar love. I got waves coming in from above. All right. Uh, I'm asking the fans, and we'll ask uh, Jim Callis momentarily, Joe Bartosh, when it's all said and done on his Hall of Fame plaque, will Gordon Beckham, will it say famous second baseman of the Chicago White Sox, will his Hall of Fame plaque say famous shortstop of the Chicago White Sox, or famous third baseman? Not third base. Of I'm the a, Chicago White Sox. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go, I think, against the grain. I'm going to say shortstop. All right. Well, you know what? You're not that far against the grain. Oh, okay. Let's see. It. Hey, thank you, Joe. He said he'd phone in from the busy, busy desk. Over at BaseballAmerica.com, they cover major league, minor league, college, high school. The draft coming up is our guy, executive editor. Jim Callis. Hello, James. Hey, Murph. How are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. Fan said of Jim Callis. You can always reach Jim at BaseballAmerica.com, the great publication. I know this is your busy season. In a uh, minute or two, you can uh, tell us uh, how things are stacking up there at BA, Baseball America, for the uh, MLB uh, draft of the college and high school players coming up. But, Jim, you're also a guy that's uh, got his... Uh, a uh, foot in the door for a uh, major league talk, minor league talk, all kind of baseball talk. You want to take a whack at our text question here? We've been asking the uh, baseball fans. Of course, Sox fans have more of an interest in this one. But I have a Cub one coming up. Jim, when it's all said and done, and you can text uh, those uh, second base or third base or shortstop, I asked, where will Gordon Beckham have played the most games in his career when it's all said and done. I'll let you know what the fans said first. Do you want to hear this, Jim? Uh, let, me, let me be unbiased. All right, good. And that's a tough one. I don't think it's third base because I think he's a better athlete than that. Uh -huh. And I think second base is the worst-case scenario. And, you know, I'm not that guy, not the biggest uh, Chris Getz fan. Um, 
You know, I'm going to say shortstop because uh-huh. if the team's constituted right now, right. I think your best team has got Alexei Ramirez in center field and Gordon Beckham is shortstop. So I will say shortstop. Well, you match up match game. You matched up with the fans. Originally, when I said second, third, or short, it sort of threw things uh, out of whack. I agree with you. I said, we're going to throw third base out. This kid's too too uh, athletic from what we read in Baseball America, our Chicago beat reporters. This guy's a middle infielder. Then when we reloaded it second or shortstop only, overwhelming, now up to 66% shortstop, 33% second base. That appears to be his spot, right, shortstop? I do. He can he can play there. He's with Jimmy. He's not he's not going to be you know uh, Ozzy Gian you know making uh, some spectacular mm-hmm. plays like Ozzy did back in the day. But he's very solid shortstop who's going to make all the routine plays and some good ones too. Now, what I want to do is re- remind everybody about uh, Ryan Sandberg. For all you young uh, fans out there, uh, Jim Callis, you and I remember the Ryan Sandberg. Uh, uh, background with the Phillies minor leagues, he was mostly, I believe, a shortstop coming up through the Phillies organization. Is that how you recall it? I do. And that's not, you know, that's cut. most of your middle infielders in the big leagues mm-hmm. and a lot of third basemen, too, come up at least through part of the minors as a shortstop. Then what happened was the Phillies knocked on the Cubs' door to make a big trade. Dallas Green, new to the Cubs, but had been, of course, a Philly guy, you know, all his life. He knew the Phillies system. The Philadelphia Phillies, they wanted Cubs shortstop uh, Ivan DeJesus and offered an aging veteran but still had a a year or two in the tank, Larry Boa. And then the Cubs, uh, Dallas Green, said, well, we need a young shortstop also. And uh, they said, well, we got the couple. Dallas, who do you want? The story is that Dallas Green threw them a curveball, a red herring, and said, I got to have Juan Samuel from your farm system. And then they said, oh, boy, Dallas wants Juan Samuel. We better keep him. They said, well, how about Ryan Sandberg? He said, okay, I'll take him. Remember how that went? It did. You know, it's funny, too. <laughs> I've also heard the story that, uh-huh. that they wanted Sandberg, and that held the deal up for a little while. Uh-huh. So who, who knows? Yeah. But, I mean, Dallas was obviously a very good judge of talent. Right. And, you know, Sandberg is interesting. I think he was about a 19th-round pick. And so people think he was this guy who kind of came out of nowhere. Wow. But he was like some of the guys... You know, you see in the draft area, he was, I think, going to go to Washington or Washington State to play football. Wow. Okay. And people just didn't think they could sign him. I mean, he was a very good athlete. I mean, as Cubs fans saw for years and would have been, you know, a mm-hmm. first or second or third round pick if teams thought they had a chance to sign him. So he was, you know, I think, it, you know, you weren't, but I think sometimes people act like this guy kind of came out of nowhere. But he was a pretty oh, good yeah. prospect, and the Phillies knew he was good, sure. too. They just really had to have Ivan DeJesus. So. And now Sandberg got comes along with Larry Boa. Now, of course, you can't put Sandberg at his favorite position shortstop because Boa came with. They had just signed a free agent by the name of Bump Wills. Remember him? Yep. Yep. Oh, no! (laughs) (laughs) Yes, we remember Bump Wills at second base. So that, and this is not unlike Gordon Beckham. So Sandberg went over to third base, marking time, but ended up at second base. Beckham will end up in the middle infield. There's no doubt, I don't think, in anybody's eyes. No, I, I mean, he's, again, I mean, is he going to be a gold glover at shortstop? Mm-hmm. No, I, I don't think he's going to be a gold glover at shortstop. Well, what happens to Alexi Ramirez then? Because the kid can field. We don't know yet how he's going to hit. I think Alexi Ramirez winds up in center field. And, I mean, it's not like right now the, mm-hmm. the White Sox have a lot of options in center field that, that do a whole lot with the bat. So uh, I think he winds up in center field. Where's Jim, And uh, Jim Cal is with us for a few more minutes. He's preparing the Baseball America draft information. We'll touch base with Jim on that in a minute. Tell you what, cross the glass, Jay Zawoski, I want to load up a new quick text question. Cub fans? 67011, powered by U.S. Cellular. 67011. Think of the Cubs bullpen. Think about it long term. When it's all said and done, that's my favorite new expression, Jim. (laughs) When it's all said and done, who will have more saves in his career? Will it be Carlos Marmel or Angel Guzman? Now think this over. Take a moment. 67011, and we'll ask Jim Callis in a couple minutes. When it's all said and done, letter M. Is that good, Jay Zawas? Letter M for Marmel or the letter G for Angel Guzman? M, me, or G, me? Who will have more saves when it's all said and done in their hopefully long 
careers. Uh, Jim Callis, as far as center field, White Sox uh, down in the system, Jordan Danks, uh, the son of Johnny Danks, uh, I know he's highly touted. You covered the minor leagues, major leagues, everything else for Baseball America. Is he gonna? Is he projected as more of a corner outfielder, or does he have the chance to play center with Alexi Ramirez at second base, maybe? Yeah, yeah, you know, and I, and I do think he definitely has a chance to play center. I mean, and I think he fits best in center because guys aren't, you know, guys like the tools. They aren't sold on the power, even though he's a big, strapping, you know, mm-hmm. six foot four, two hundred ten pound guy. I do think if you have both Alexi Ramirez and Gordon Beckham in the middle infield. Yeah. Uh-huh. Then you have Beckham at second and Alexa Ramirez at short. I got gotcha. you. And uh, one Cubs uh, thought, two minor leaguers that are now in the major leagues, Jake Fox and Micah Hoffpower. And I know you and I kicked this around briefly uh, one of our earlier visits. But now that uh, Derek Lee has one year remaining on the contract, that's next year. If the Cubs wanted to, would you think this would make sense? 2010, Derek Lee still at the whatever, $15 million. Let's say then, the year following, would you feel a straight platoon of the right-handed hitting Fox against lefties? That would be every fourth, fifth day, you know. And then Hoff Power. In other words, you'd have a very low price first base uh, platoon there with both guys making, you know, in the six, seven hundred thousand dollar range. Is that something that a guy like Jim Henry might be thinking two years down the line? I think it's a possibility. I mean, I think a lot of it would depend on how Hoff Power mm-hmm. and, and Fox produce sure. between now and then also. I mean, I, I also think, and we've kicked this around, that if the right deal presented itself, mm-hmm. I, you know, and they can improve themselves elsewhere and trade Derek Lee and, pl- and slide those guys in, you'd have to think seriously about doing it. With the economy, it might be tough unless you... Uh uh, ate about half of uh, of the contract. It would be, and, that, and that's why yeah. I don't think it necessarily happens. But if you could do that... I'm talking about uh, 2011. You right. know, no, I know yeah. what you're saying. Sure. I, I'm saying even before then, yeah. I could see maybe having right. that happen. Hey, Jim, what's going on, and when is the baseball draft? And then we'll get to that uh, Cubs uh, question. M for Marmel, G for Guzman. Real quick, everybody, 67011. Who will have more saves? Right now, it is, what, 11 careers, so he's got a, a head start by 11, Marmol to zero for Guzman. What's going on at BaseballAmerica.com right now, Jim Callis? Well, it's, it's all draft all the time right now. Uh-huh. Uh, draft is on Tuesday night at uh, 5 p.m. Central, it begins, and uh, I'm supposed to be writing up state-by-state reports for the entire Midwest, and I'm doing that uh-huh. and working the phones and talking to you, and, <laughs> and today's project, when I get off the phone, yeah. to finish writing up our, our projected mock first round. It's my my third projection uh, so far of the spring. Uh-huh. And uh, BaseballAmerica.com to hook into that. Can, uh, now, refresh us real quick. Where are the Cubs uh, and Sox? They both are uh, having low uh, first-round picks this year, I'm guessing. Right, that's the price of, success. Uh, price of success. The sure. White Sox are picking 23, and the Cubs are picking 31. And uh, I, I want everyone to direct themselves to uh, BaseballAmerica.com. So let me guess. The Sox and Cubs, uh, you're predicting that they're looking in the direction of, let me think, the Cubs are looking for hitting, the White Sox are looking for pitching. Actually, I think, you know, in the first round. Other way around? Well, I was going to say, in the first round draft, you kind of pretty much have to take what comes to you. Best player available, okay. And it's not, it's a strong year for pitching. I think Mm -hmm. we're going to have a run on a bunch of pitchers ahead of those guys. White Sox, I hear more than anybody. There's a, there's a, a, a bunch of athletic outfielders. There's Jared Mitchell, who's a backup wide receiver on LSU's football team. There's a high school outfielder from Texas named Everett Williams, a high school outfielder from New Jersey named uh, Mike Trout. There's a high school outfielder from Puerto Rico named Raymond Fuentes. Um, there's a, a college outfielder in California named uh, Brett Jackson. And, and I just keep hearing outfield, outfield, outfield. I think it's uh-huh. one of those guys. And my guess is Everett Williams, who's from Austin, much like uh, like Jordan and John yeah, Dank, yeah. same area. And uh, not the same high school. And uh, yeah, of all these athletic outfielders, I think he's the best hitter. And I think that would be a very nice pick for them at 23 if it unfolds that way. Jim, this is a draft for high school uh, or college, uh, basically. Uh, the, and do, do, out, do fielding position guys, and, and as opposed to pitchers, which is these days, and it probably changes over the years, is it the high school uh, fielder, a position guy that they can project, but they like the college pitcher, or is it college for both? Or high? What, what's the current thinking? Because it does change. Yeah, you know, I, I think it's more balanced than it was you know a couple years ago when Moneyball was in vogue. Uh-huh. I think if everything's equal, teams would prefer college over high school from the fact that those guys have a little less.
less negotiating leverage, and they're going to get there quicker because they're older and there's less guesswork involved. Easier to, to project yeah, how they're going to be at 25 years old. Let's right. Say. Although, you know, again, I mean, with all these showcases and summer things going uh -huh. on with high schoolers, it's a lot easier. And then, I mean, I think you'd, you'd take, if everything's equal, people would tell you, okay, that the position players are safer than the pitchers because of the injury risk. Although, I, I'm not sure, you know, you flip that around. Uh -huh. you know, everybody always wants pitching, and everybody, you talk to scouts, they say the hardest <laughs> thing to do when you're scouting yeah. is to project the bat. So wow. I don't think there's a big difference pitcher, hitter. That's kind of individual team needs. But I think the majority of clubs, you know, maybe 60 to 4 percent, 40 percent, if you had it equal, would rather have a college guy because they're a little cheaper and they get there quicker. That's why he's the best. Jim Callis, BaseballAmerica.com. I'll leave you with this, Jim. We're getting our results tabulated right now, and uh, it is almost a dead heat. Uh, Marmel and Guzman, 48%, 52% which is the standard deviation if that's how John Dewan would call Maybe something like that. But stat of the day. I like that. I'm going to steal that. Stat of the day. Who do you, I'll put you on the spot, when it's all said and done, my new favorite phrase, who will end up career-wise with more saves? Uh, Carlos Marmol, he already has 11, so he's got a head start by 11 to 0 right now. Angel Guzman, what do you think? Uh, I'm going to still go Marmol. Uh -huh. um, although, I mean, Guzman, it's, 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 that guy's had a strange career. You know, yes. He was our Cubs' top prospect for a long time, got hurt, kind of disappeared. Uh -huh. And now, I mean, he looks terrific. So I'm I, a I'm big still fan. Go Marmol, though. I'm going with Guzman. Hey, give me a call in about 15 years, or I'll give you a call. We'll see who won that. Yeah, we'll one. remember that one. I'm writing that one down. <laughs> oh, I'm writing it down right here also. Jim Callis, get back to work. BaseballAmerica.com. They cover everything, including the draft. And the draft date is, uh, what is that darn thing, this it week? Tuesday, Tuesday, June 9th. So it'll be three days this year, but the first three rounds will start at uh, 5 p.m. Central Time. BaseballAmerica.com. Thank you, James. Thank you. All right, buddy, bye-bye. It's Murph, it's Jim Callis, and I'm driven to you by Chevy. DriveChicago.com. I just love Angel Guzman. Maybe they'll both have terrific careers. Maybe they'll each end up with about 300 saves. That would be the day. Back in a flash, Murph Palooza, driven to you by Chevy Drives. Chicago.com. Hey, we're working on our nominations right now for Tool of the Week. Lots of good, juicy selections available. We'll do that at 1 o'clock. It's the score. Marfa Palooza and what I hope is a fun, feckless, casual Friday for you. Tool of the Week in a few minutes. Much more to cover on the Cubs and the Sox. Looking here at the uh, pitching rotations, what the Cubs did because of yesterday's rainout, Zambrano moves to today on eight days rest, Dempster Saturday on six, and Wells Sunday on four. They skipped Sean Marshall. It was going to be Zambrano last night, and then in Cincinnati, Dempster, Marshall, Wells. Now it's Zambrano, Dempster, Wells, Sean Marshall, the lefty Lou needs in the bullpen. White Sox will be going Danks. Floyd and yeah and Cologne yeah Jay what what is it there Jay we're very busy you I'm know. looking at a story here on the uh, on the CBS Sports website about some pirates that are angry oh no about not those damn pirates trade. again they're they're not no, taking no, not over the, ships not the Somali pirates right. the Pittsburgh pirates uh, who the Pittsburgh they still in pirates. business yeah well <laughs> sort of uh -huh. they're a little uh, irritated with the latest trade with we're uh, sunk and we have to pay through the nose and you know it now the players are mad at about. What's, what's the story? They're mad at the GM and the franchise, frankly, for trading another yeah. star young player. Yeah. Uh, Nate McClough. Right. Jay Zawaski, this is exactly correct. In fact, on the yellow pad, look here. See my yellow pad, Jay? I do. It's a white pad now. The yellow costs too much money, so my yellow pad's no longer. Keep the economy. Yeah, white yep. pads. Yeah. Now, here's the thing. I thought about this yesterday. The, the Major League Baseball... They ought to be involved in what's going on. What's going on in Pittsburgh is wrong. It's wrong to the fans. It's wrong to uh, the other 29 franchises in baseball. Bud Selig declined to talk to us. I don't know what the answer is. That's not my department. But if you're a Pittsburgh Pirate fan or you're another team in MLB and you're going to go there and there's going to be empty ballparks, last year they trade away uh, Xavier Nady, Jason Bay. There was another guy to it. Is the story of any other names? Of course, Tommaso Marte. Tommaso Marte, yeah. right. Uh, of course, uh, Ramirez, uh, Aramis Ramirez years ago, uh, Jason Kendall. You know, how can you be a Pirate fan? And now the players are upset. This is very interesting. This will be uh, very fascinating to follow to see how the players, who are now mad at their own ball team for dumping salary, how this could 
yes or no, reverberate throughout baseball up to Mr. You-Know-Who. Bud Seeley declined to talk to us. Murphy Palooza, catch up on a few things. Back in a flash, tool of the week. Sports Radio 6, said my friends at rentalmax.com. Go visit them. And the phone lines are open. So let Murph know who your tool of the week is at 312-640. This hour of the score brought to you by Menards. Nice tools. Can you hand me that impact wrench? Did you use the word tool? Yes. Yes. Okay, that's what I thought. Tool. It's time for the Tool of the Week Award with Mike Murphy here on the score. Sports Radio 670. I think he's a tool. T-O-O-L? That's he's a oh. tool. I think he's a tool. tool. He's a knob, knob. And I don't, don't want him. him. Who's been a tool in the sports world this week? Dial it up at 312-644-6767. That's 312-644-6767. And hammer whoever you like on the score. Sports Radio 670. My point is that I am a tool, and I brought additional right. tools to this team. I think he's going to get a lot of tools before this year is over. Tools. Tool. tool of the Week is brought to you by Rentalmax Rental and Rentalmax.com. Rental All my friends at Rentalmax, Rentalmax.com, you know, they are the problem solvers for contractors, weekend warriors, Rentalmax.com. They're not a big national chain. Uh-uh. Local guys like yourself. All right, phone lines are jammed. When someone hangs up, that's your cue to dial quickly. 644-6767. And we hate rules. Who likes rules? We hate rules. The only rules we have for Tool of the Week are whoever it is you nominate has to be involved in some way with the world of sports. And whatever they did had to occur over the last seven days. Hence, Tool of the Week. Let's get to car phone Gavin. Hello, Gavin. Murph, how you doing? Fine, Gavin. So many tools, so little time. Who do you have to get us rolling here for Rental Max? Tony Dungy for saying Jake Cutler isn't the answer for the Bears right now. Yeah, what was that? What was that all about? You know, I really don't know. But Tony, if we had had Jake Cutler last year when we played you in Indianapolis, uh, we would have ran you out of your own park. You know what? Tony Dungy and Lovey Smith, we know that they are more than just casual friends. It's almost as if you wonder if something was orchestrated here to light a fire under somebody. It just doesn't add up, does it? Not at all. <laughs> Gavin, thanks for getting us rolling, buddy. Appreciate it very much, all right? Thanks, Murph. Thank you, my friend. None of my tools are, are especially uh, special. Well, you know what? Here's the thing. Renting equipment, and it doesn't matter if you're a onesie-twosie guy, a big general contractor, a facility operation vice president, or you just like to work around the house. Renting equipment has never been more important than right now when the economy's tight. You need it. They got it. Why buy it? Go rent it. You know where. Rentalmax.com. Going in line down the phones here. Don from Oak Lawn is next. Hello, Don. Hey, it's Tom from Oak Lawn. Tom I'm so Hey, Oak Lawn Tom. How are you, buddy? Couldn't read my own writing here. That's okay. Do a good, Murph. Thank you. I have to nominate Mitch Rosen for expanding the scores trailer trash hours from 2 to 6, from now 1 to 6, and leaving us Murph fans unknown where you're going to be. I, I appreciate it. Rosen. Tommy, everybody's eligible, including uh, including Murpho. Have I won lately? Jason? I see. I've been on a roll. I haven't won. You have not, no. Not lately. No. Nope. But I get my nominations. I make sure. I don't want to be lonely. Let's go next to uh, Richard from Hyde Park is on the score. Hello, Richard. Hey, man. How you doing? Richard, I'm terrific. It's a fun, feckless Friday. I've never felt better. It's a beautiful day. But you're going to tool up somebody, aren't you? Oh, yeah. Who you got? I called manager Lou. Oh, uh, Lou's had a rough week indeed. Go ahead. Take your time, Richard. Yes, sir. Well, under his watch, I'm finding that the Cubs team is unraveling. Uh-huh. You know, he doesn't have a clue about the pitching staff. What about and yanking? How about when he yanks Randy Wells? Oh, it was too hot, Atlanta. 83 stinking pitches. You think the kid wanted to come out? I don't. I don't think so. But that's <laughs> Lou, you know. I think he holds something between him and his heart in two as well. Well. And, and thirdly, he joined at the hip with the $136 million starting half player, uh, Serrano. Yeah, well, Serrano out there. He's still batting leadoff. I've given up talking about that. Lou evidently feels that that's the best spot for Serrano. Richard Soriano. Richard, I appreciate it, buddy. Thanks, Lou. All right. That's just a tool uh -huh. Jim Hendry has in his bag. Hey, plumbing contractors, 
Rentalmax.com. Electrical contractors, concrete contractors, you're getting where we're going with this? Rentalmax.com, your rental resource. And here's a great thing, 10 locations. If you're zipping around Chicagoland, you got different projects, different jobs. Or how about if you're a GC and you've got different projects lined up this spring, lined up this summer, one convenient billing right there, boom, rental match. Your guys go to Aurora, Chicago. This is where all their locations are. Crest Hill, Downers Grove. How about the locations? The rental match guys have Joliet, Lake Zurich, Orland Park, Roselle, St. Charles, Wheaton. One convenient billing. You guys, they get in, they get out, and you, you get the one convenient invoicing at the end of the year. Get old rentalmax.com. They will set it up for you. Evergreen Park. Jim was next in line as we go right down the line here. Hello, Jim. Hey, Murph. How are you? Fine, Jim. Who you got for us? My tool is going to be Mitch Rosen's boss, Rod Zimmerman, so you might have to break the tie at the end of the day for again. I guess expanding what that last guy said, the trailer trash hours. But again, uh, Murph, unfortunately, just like in a lot of other professions, the blowhards and the the guys that self promote always seem to get the, the head of uh, you know get ahead of the good guys like you. So sorry to hear that, but that's my tool. Hey, everybody's out of Hey Jim, thanks for participating over the years. I appreciate it, buddy. Tool idiot. <laughs> tool idiot with an Aston Martin. Where's Entourage when you need it? Uh ooh, interesting. Southside Pat's next on the score. Hello, Pat. What's up, Murph? Hey, Pat Tool time, my friends at Rental Max. Anybody in the world of sports has to be over the last seven days. Who are you tooling up, Patrick? I got to do Ozzy Gian. He, uh, for, uh, he, he's, they call up the bacon kid, and he, he just shows no confidence in the kid. He, I mean, uh -huh. he's, he's quick to trot out Brian Anderson and Dwayne Wise, but they got a kid that can hit in the minor leagues, and they bring him up, shows no confidence in the kid. Well, you know what? It might be a little bit of Ozzy's psychiatric uh, uh, massaging. You know, he says, oh, here comes the savior. It's Gordon Beckham or uh, Bacon. Maybe he's just doing this, though. I'm not sure, Pat. Appreciate the call. Maybe he's just trying to take the pressure off the kid. But Oswaldo gets a vote. He's got every tool you need. <laughs> yes, he does. Who was that? Was that the Ranger? That's the Ranger. <laughs> yeah, that one's still up, or is it in a rotation? Did you already kill it? I like that one. Like He's that. got every tool you need. <laughs> hey, Rental Max, see, the big industrial plants, the big facilities, maybe the big office complexes, here's what you do. You tell your facility operation guy, if you're the big boss, if you're the guy with the checkbook, if you're the guy that makes the decisions, you get your plant maintenance operation facility VP and you go, listen, we're not buying any more new equipment. Why? Everything we need is at Rentalmax, rentalmax.com, thousand different tools and pieces of equipment, large and small. Hey, they'll even deliver it over. Work it out with them, rentalmax.com, good guys in the neighborhood. Dave is in Algonquin. I see also Easy e Rockford, Pin Gray, uh, Gary's calling Valpo. Let's roll in now, though, with Algonquin Dave. Hello, Dave. Hey, I got to go back to back with Ozzy for a different reason, though. All right. Good. Two intentional walks. He intentionally walks Cuss to get the Holiday, and Holiday gets the Giambi. I don't, I'm not a baseball manager, but he's walking the worst hitter to get to the better hitter. I don't get it. Too much thinking. Well, Let your you, pitchers pitch. Well, you know what? You go. Sometimes you go by the book, and the book explodes in your face. I actually thought both of me, just me, I thought Ozzy's moves were uh, by the book and uh, logical at the time. But Algonquin Dave, let the record show, when it blows up in your face, you get tooled. There's so many tools just in baseball. <laughs> Who is that, Jay? That was just a caller, right? Or... Yeah, it's uh, titled as Caller here. So, I love yeah. that one. <laughs> I love that one. Uh, let's go to Stager. Let's go down to uh, Easy E. Hello, E. Hey, Murph. Hey, e, who's your tool, buddy? Well, Murph, they always say that uh, the two things that you can count on in life is death, death and taxes. Right. Well I, got, well, I got two more things you can count on in life. As long as Mur Mike Murphy's on the score, I'll always have their number on speed dial. Uh -huh. And number two, yeah. as long as Sammy Sosa opens his mouth, you know E.T. will be calling for tool of the week. <laughs> Easy. Always great to pick up the phone when you're on the other yeah, side. <laughs> Thank you. And maybe the, the most important tool is the, is the mental tool. Well, you know, uh, Sammy back in the news today partially because of Derek Lee. You know, I don't like to tool up uh, Derek Lee here because it looks like I have a uh, agenda, which I don't. But, Jay, it's my show. I can tool him up, right? Absolutely. Derek Lee today uh, to Paul Sullivan. I think it's an exclusive with Sully, but maybe I missed it in the other papers. How about this? 
uh, Derek Lee is proposing a day for an, a day to honor Sammy Sosa, pay tribute to Sosa with a day in his honor at Wrigley Field, such as with uh, Greg Maddox, according to Paul Sullivan. Lee says, quote, he carried uh, the franchise for a long time. I think it would be fitting. Obviously, he has had the allegations against him, but nothing has been proven. Well, that's true, I guess. I think you have to do something for him. The guy was the franchise for a long time. He put up Hall of Fame numbers. He put fans in the seats. Well, I didn't know that was the criteria to have a day for yourself because you put fans in the seats. But maybe that's the way Derek Lee looks at it. That's his prerogative. He was touted as a five-tool man, but he lost two tools. Ooh, I hate when I lose my tools. Jay from Roselle on the score. Hello, Jay. Hi, Murph. How you doing? Fine, Jay. Tool time. Mitch Rosen. Go ahead. Uh, expanding the trailer trash and uh, not giving Mike Murphy a slot on uh, the sports uh, lineup. Thank you, uh, Jay. Appreciate your input. You're right about me being Jewish and not knowing what a tool is. <laughs> Let's go next to, uh, oh, by the way, I want to remind everybody about my guys. My friend, they've been with Murph for a long time. Why? Because they're good guys. You got to See Jack.com, Jack Phelan, Johnny Phelan, and J.C. Phelan, Jack Phelan, Chevrolet, Harlem, and Ogden in Lions. Hey, minutes away from LaGrange, Western Springs. How about Hinsdale? How about Burr Ridge, Indian Head Park? You got to See Jack. Dot com. Going in line down the screen, as we call it here, next to... Hey, Gary moved. Is that stream with Gary and Pingree Grove? Yeah, I'm giving you my new moniker. <laughs> Hello, new moniker, Gary. Tool up. I'm going to give it to Mitch Rosen also for the uh, same reason, for uh, taking you off the noon to two uh, hour. I thought, uh, you know, I, this is the highlight of my uh, lunch hour, I should say. And, uh, you know, I'm just uh, very disappointed. But I know, you, I know you'll show up somewhere at the score, so um, just uh, just keep us in mind. Well, just keep us posted. Well, Gary, now, I don't want you eating more at lunch, you know, so I don't want this being a health issue. For, for heaven's sakes, I appreciate all your input over the years. Thanks, Gary. Thanks, Murph. All right, let's go next to... Uh, uh, Dave is next on the score. He's in Rockford. Hello, Dave. Hey, Murph, how you doing? I'm fine, thank you. Tool up. I want to tool up Hawk Harrelson. And first of all, I want to say I love Hawk, but almost every, several times during every game, he's constantly complaining about the balls and strikes that the White Sox don't get. And whenever, uh, you know, there's a close call, that goes for the Sox. He never says, oh, we got a break there, but he's always complaining when, you know, there's a close call that goes against the Sox. Hey, you know what? Hawkeroo might be listening right now on a nice golf course somewhere, and he's going, Rockford, Dave, you're tooling me up. Oh, he says, Dave, thanks a lot, Dave. All right, thanks, Murph. All right, buddy. He's the male, you know, and the hound. Oh, yeah. Hey, Jay, do you think, uh, don't call in, we don't have any Sox tickets. Right. Usually, when we when we hear the uh, dad gummit, it's but not. Today. Yeah, none today. No. Nope. Hey, is this last week's winner? Two of the week. How long? Not Quentin. Not Marble. Sambrano. Oh, what a nice voice. All over this land. Give it to me, Big Z. Murphy Palooza back in a flash. Second round of phone calls. For my friends at Rentalmax, Rentalmax.com, they got dump trucks, moving vans, they got everything. Visit them, Rentalmax.com, check it out now. I'd ring out a warning, I'd ring out love between my brothers and my sisters, all over this land. Ah, tool of the week, second round of phone calls. We hate rules. The only rules are whoever you nominate must be involved in the world of sports. Whatever they did had to occur over the last seven days. And we always remind you that rental mix, they are problem solvers for contractors, do-it-yourselfers. You know the big uh, union guys, contractors, maybe you're a piping uh, contractor, union plumber, union electrical, union concrete guys. Hey, rental mix. Dot com. They have the equipment you need. You don't want to buy it these days. You want to rent it. And the backyard, I always call you the weekend warriors. Have you built the uh, deck yet? Honey, I'm building a deck. You haven't built it in five years, right? Rent what you need at Rental Next. The hydraulic post hole digger. That'll get you rolling right there. The patio in the back. Honey, I'm going to build a, the patio this year. It's been five years. Rental Max has all the equipment for the, uh, you need the brick saws, the compaction equipment, sod cutters, and more. 
And how about the, the lawn? Your lawn looks, well, frankly, like garbage. You know what? The aerator you need, the dethatcher, the chippers, chainsaws for the trees, the trimmers, all your yard cleanup spring projects. You better get rolling. Rentalmax.com. Let's go back to the phone lines in order. It's next. Uh, hey, it's Rogers Park Rich. Hello, Rich. Hello, Murph. Hey, Rich, who are you going to tool up? Mitch Rosen, for the obvious reasons, and I want to say, I think there's two qualities that you have that set you apart. One is, you are very knowledgeable, and as a result, you have interesting questions and interesting guests, and you're not afraid to share, you know, guests uh, the time. And second, as others have remarked, you are a very uh, civil and polite person. Anyone who calls up, you treat right. And I just want to say, Murph, I don't know where you're going, what's going to happen, but as a White Sox fan, I respect your Cub fervor, and I want to thank you for all the times I've listened to you, because you're, I always learn something when I listen to you. Well, it's kind, thank you, Murph. kind, Rich. Thank you very much. I appreciate Rogers Park, Rich. Big wheel, keep on turning. Jeez, I always get Clarence, uh, Creedence Clearwater. Big wheel, keep on turning. I love that expression. Yeah. And uh, I can Tina Turner. Who wrote that? Is, is that a, is that a song that goes way back, maybe you know, a hundred years? Or did Fogarty write that? Did Creedence? That's a good question. CCR? Fraud Just Mary Google is the song, right? Yeah. Google Google that up there. Big wheel, keep on turning. Let's go to uh, Rob from Mount Prospect. Oh, Rob. Hey, Robert. Hey. How you doing? Uh, good, good. Who's your tool, my friend? Well, well let's go off the board and uh, uh, Sammy Sosa. Okay. Because as Sammy, as he allegedly says, people are going to remember his legacy, whatever the hell that means. <laughs> I mostly remember the court bat when he jumped the club and left the game early, and when he lied and said that he didn't, and the video cameras caught him, and then when they find him, the Cubs, uh, one day's pay one 162nd he wouldn't even pay that back he's a liar uh, and and he's he's a, a welcher and he's a cheat and, and I'm, and with the I'm with the cork right bat now. and he's a cheat with the cork bat Exactly right. He thinks he's going yeah. to the Hall of Fame soon. Derek Lee wants to hold a day for him. Unbelievable. Thank you, Mount, Thank Mount, you. Mount Prospect Rob. What? You haven't visited rentalmix.com in a half hour. Get over and visit them. Mike in Naperville. Hello, Michael. Murph, I usually start with where you've been, but now i got to say where the hell are you going? Hey, you know what? I think that Conan O'Brien needs some new staff comedian writers because he's struggling. I like the way that you, you're a writer over there, Mike. Appreciate it. Who's your tool? Oh, Mitch Rosen, buddy. Listen, the stock market's in the toilet. My business sucks. And the, no, I can't get in my car and listen to you from two, noon to two. I don't even know what to do anymore, buddy. Uh, the market will rally, and so will I. Appreciate the kind words, Mike. Good luck, friends. Thank you. Thank you. By the way, Murph, Proud yes. Mary was written by John Fogarty. Really? What a Green's guy. Clearwater re re released Ju January 15, uh -huh. 1969. 1969, yep. I guess. Hell of a year. Hell of a year. Until about September 1st. <laughs> Time for one or two final callers in case we've got to break this log jam. Oak Brook is on the score. Hey, David. Murph, let me tell you something, buddy. Yeah. I'm a diehard White Sox fan. Yes, sir. I'm a Cub hater. Yes, sir. The only two people that I admire when it comes to the Cubs is my son uh, and you. And I was about two years ago. Uh -huh. I might have been two or three and uh, driving a tough time. I yeah. said, you know what? I said, if the, Cubs, if the Cubs ever go, I hope for you and my son, the only two people that I would root, you know, that I would actually, you know, uh, root for when it comes to uh, winning a World Series for the Cubs. And everybody else, no. Let me tell you something. Yeah. You know, it's amazing. I just heard about this now, about you leaving. Do you have a personal tweet page? People follow you? No, I, I, I'm what they call old school under the radar, but David... Uh uh, I will, uh, I will uh, make sure that if I'm around, you, you'll know where I am. But right now, big wheel keep on turning. And for your son, I hope that there's a World Series in his lifetime. And I hope they hurry up because I have a feeling he's younger than I am. So I need, I need to be there also. Thank you, Oak Brook Dave. Appreciate it. Our final tooler of the day. Tool of the week, my friends, at Rental Max. They support uh, this segment. Support them. At least give them a look. Maybe they have something that you need and you didn't even know. at Skokie, Illinois. Hello, David. Hey, Mark. How you doing? Good, Dave. Hey, by the way, you're my final uh, tooler right here. Uh, so uh, break this log jam. 
Oh, I really can. I have to pile on Mitch Rosen. I have to say this is my first time ever calling your show, and I've been listening for 15 years, Murph. Love my first time callers. And um, I'm just, I just am forever gassed. I wish you all the best, and, and, and I thank you for all the many years of Great Radio. Well, Dave, thanks, and no charge for uh, the uh, the uh, entertainment. And flabber, flabbergasted is one of my favorite words, David. <laughs> and for that, for one of my favorite words... Congratulations. You've just been named the Browns Chicken Caller of the Show. Now you're really, you're really flabbergasted, no aren't kidding, you? No you're kidding. flabbergasted, Dave, from <laughs> Skokie. Hang on, buddy. Ho hook, up, lot, hook up flabbergasted, Dave. In Skokie. And in there, all right, hold it down over there, Peanut Gallery. Very, very spirited voting. The winner of this week's Tour of the Week is Mitch Rosen. Well, Murph, that wonderful relief that comes when them, they just stop hitting you in the head with a hammer. Uh, it feels so good when they stop. Tools. That's it. We're all out of tools. Thanks for listening and thanks for participating in Murph's Tool of the Week Award. Be sure to join us next Friday because there's always a tool. There's always someone who has a hammer for a head. That's right. You'll hear about him next Friday on The Score Sports Radio 670. Tool of the Week is brought to you by Rental Max and RentalMax.com. Got a uh, last-minute uh, tool nomination, and the good news is it's neither you nor me. And 670thescore.com. This is from uh, Nick. Nick says, Danica Patrick. He <laughs> couldn't get through the phone lines. You're, you're hip to what happened with her this week, yeah. Dan Patrick and all that? She, she made the mistake, right, Danica Patrick, of... Saying what she felt, because then she had to do the old backpedal and say, oh, I didn't, I was joking. See, that's what happens when you're honest. <laughs> yeah. You uh, get yourself in trouble. Nikki mails in, Danica Patrick was saying that she would use performance-enhancing drugs as long as she wouldn't get caught. And then she took her uh, comments back, uh, which means to say, you know, uh, hey, if you're not going to, if you feel it, you're probably going to say it anyway, so don't say it if you don't mean it, right? Hey, you know, <laughs> a, little, a little, a little viver and never hurt any driver, Murph, you know. Is that the little pill that you take? Yeah, the when... Revive. With oh, my... oh, oh. It's caffeine. It's, oh. it's okay. It's, right. it's legal, I swear. Right. See, I wouldn't I know. hope. I wouldn't know. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Joe Show. <laughs> Murph with you for a few more minutes here. And uh, do, do people still, is there still Casual Friday? Maybe in a few minutes. We, I got some emails. Murph missed some of Casual Friday last week. It's an old sound bite from the Larry David Show. I think everyone's dressing casually now, right, when they go to work? I don't know. It's always worth replaying. Hey, I got a lot of money involved here. This is my will. Go wrangle someone else. We still have that in the uh, hopper there for later, right, Jay? Oh, yeah. All right, maybe in a few minutes. Tell you what. At the end of the week around this time is when I look at uh, all the work that Jay Zawaski's done. We have different tapes we uh, pull and produce, and now it's uh, electronic, of course, digitally uh, vaulted, as they say. But there was a few little gems here from both this week and uh, earlier in the week, that I don't want these to just disappear. First of all, this may even be John Dewan's uh, stat of the week on Tuesday, if he wants to work on it. They keep at BaseballInfoSolutions.com velocity of every pitch thrown by every pitcher in every game in the major leagues. They either have a guy with their own radar gun or someone watching, uh, you know, the, the TV and Velo, by the way, it's called Velo now. If you're with the baseball guys, someday having a beer, go, hey, how's his Velo? Don't think, oh, this guy knows what he's talking Velo's down. Oh, no. His Velo's up. Mm, why would his Velo be up? Too much Viagra. So, no. Thinking about Velo, all right? First, we have a sound bite. Very interesting. Todd Hollinsworth, over on Comcast, jumped in with Mully and Hanley within the last week or so, and talked about the National League pitching. I thought this was interesting. Here's a guy, Todd Hollinsworth, that knows what he's talking about. Professional hitter, as they call him, right? The National League, boy, it's so much centers around good old country hardball and fastballs and setting up your off-speed pitches. That just seems like how it works over in the National League. Now, this was precipitated by Ozzie Gian back during the uh, Jake Peavy breakdown. And uh, the uh, Roy Oswald never breaking in stories. I don't know if they were fabricated, planted, or what, but that's neither here nor there. That's when Ozzy said, you know, hey, 
a National League pitcher doesn't want to come to the American League because of, uh, well, here, here, here's Ozzy right here. It's the American League. If I was a pitcher, I'd stay in the National League. <laughs> or leave me. I was a pitcher, and I know, if I pitch in the National League, I will think it twice to come to the American League because now you'll find out how to really pitch. You know what I mean? Every lineup in the American League, every lineup in the American League is loaded. And, uh, you know I me, mean? those guys, they, 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 they never pitch in the American League, they never. Uh, they like the National League. Some players love to play National League, some players don't. I mean, that's, that's, that's the way it is, but if they don't want to play for the West, it's good. You know I mean? And, uh, Ozzy being Ozzy, if they don't, and, and I believe we we did a topic on that with the fans, Sox fans, and we we threw it to you, and you said, yeah, you're, you, that's exactly true. Do you want any player coming to your team that doesn't really want to be here? And the example I used on the north side, who could forget? I know Andy McPhail. He's Andy McPhail. <laughs> and the clowns trying to forget. Remember the Fred McGriff nightmare? That's when Andy. And Little Ed Lynch, you don't know what to do. Little Ed Lynch, they, they chased for like weeks and weeks to try to get him out of the, to, to wave his no trade from the uh, Braves, I guess it was at the time, right? And then when he finally acquiesced and said, oh, my God, where was he coming from? Devil Rays. Devil, was it the D-Rays, yep. Braves, whatever. He didn't want to come, and they finally induced him somehow uh, to come, and it was a disaster. Now, Ozzy again raises some interesting points. And probably, factually, he's 100% correct. There are hitters up and down these American League lineups. If I'm a National League pitcher, I wouldn't want to be here because these guys in the American League, they just hit, hit, hit. And I don't want to get into a whole interleague thing. And I understand the American League blows the National League out of the water head to head. Well, rosters are constructed differently, but whatever. That's not the point. I, I think back to the Todd Hollinsworth statement. So be thinking, Ozzy again. American League lineups, oh, hitters up and down. No National League pitcher would like to come to the American League. But now, if you buy into Todd Hollinsworth's statement. The National League, boy, it so much centers around good old country hardball and fastballs and setting up your off-speed pitches. That just seems like how it works over in the National League. Now, what I'm going to say if John Dewan can do for Tuesday's stat of the week would be this. Velo, velocity, if you're just getting in the car, he will be able to tell us if Todd Hollinsworth is correct. They'll be able to run the numbers at BaseballInfoSolutions.com for us, and he will be able to tell us the average speed of fastballs in the American League and the average speed of fastballs in the uh, other league. They'll also be able to tell us frequency. In other words, what percentage of pitches in the National League are fastballs? What percentage of pitches in the American League are fastballs? And what's the average MPH in each league? Then we will know if Todd Hollinsworth is correct factually. The National League, boy, it so much centers around good old country hardball and fastballs and setting up your off-speed pitches. That just seems like how it works over in the National League. Now, if that is born to be true, then it would stand to reason according to Hollinsworth's premise, that it's harder to hit good old country hardball than it is, well, anything other than that. Junk ball, off-speed, curveball, slider, cutter, splitter, call it whatever the hell you want. So then you would say to Ozzy, Ozzy, we believe you're exactly true, but could it be that the American League has more, quote-unquote, hitting up and down the lineup because... They're not facing as much good old country hardball. I don't know. It's the American League. If I was a pitcher, I'd stay in the National League. <laughs> or leave me. I was a pitcher. And I know if I pitch in the National League, I will think it twice to come to the American League because now you'll find out how to really pitch. You know what I mean? Every lineup in the American League, every lineup in the American League is loaded. And, you know I me, mean? those guys, they, 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 they never pitch in the American League. They never... Uh, they like the National League. Some players love to play National League, some players don't. I mean, that's, that's, that's the way it is, but if they don't want to play for the White House, good. You know I mean? See, now, uh, that's right in John Dewan's wheelhouse. Factual, lay it out, is the National League country hardball? And uh, if so, maybe that is why American League. I know that there's a ninth hitter, there's no pitcher bang the DH. 
The cow jumped over the moon. I understand all that. This hour of the score brought to you by Menards. Something else, uh, else here from the vault. Now, this was back on, uh, this is uh, from Comcast Sportsnet. Jay, when it says uh, Sox 514-05, that means May 14th. May 14th. All right. right. So, less than a month ago, right? Right. Some interesting, interesting dialogue. Now, the reason we bring in this back, this is uh, Stone and Hawk in the middle of the game talking about a guy who's very, very comparable in many ways, hopefully uh, as good as Evan Longoria, but with the story of the White Sox today, yesterday being the calling up of uh, Gordon Beckham, I said, you know what, let's pull out that sound from Stone and Hawk about a month ago. Draw the parallels. Every time he says Longoria, be thinking about Gordon Beckham, and there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes with guys that are going to make a lot of money and be around a long time, and you know that after six years in baseball, you can be a free agent unless you sign like a five-year extension in year three, then they got you for eight years, and then Scott Boris gets mad. He says uh, agents shouldn't do that. So Gordon Beckham is here, and as far as we know, there were no, but we don't know for sure, as far as we know, there were no offers extended by the White Sox to try to sign him to a long-term deal prior to Beckham coming up yesterday. But again, no one knows. Well, the agent would know, and uh, Jerry Reinsdorf and Kenny would know. But let's just zero in on uh, Evan Longoria, a very comparable up-and-coming young star. Longoria also leading the league in doubles. Second home runs with 11. And he's some fielder at third. So that was a guy that didn't start the season with the Rays last year. And miraculously, when he signed a seven-year contract, they didn't worry about arbitration or free agency, and they brought him to the big leagues. Yeah, that might turn out to be one of the cheapest contracts ever signed in the history of the game. Great foresight on the part of Tampa Bay, knowing that they've got a guy that a long-term contract wouldn't affect his intensity on the field on a daily basis. And a great contract, uh, thanks there, Comcast Sports, a great contract by Tampa uh, Bay because now, you know what, they got the guy longer and at what will be less money. Gordon Beckham, I wonder if uh, his agent suggested a long-term deal or said, you know what, let's just sit tight. We'll never know unless it comes out. Sports Radio 670. It's Murph, driven to you by Chevy Drive, Chicago.com. Casual Friday. You found it, Jay? Oh, one of our favorite things on Friday. Let's go back many years ago to the Larry David Show. You're Joel Reynolds. Yes, I am. Would you like to have a seat, sir? Yeah, in a minute. Uh, I'm a little puzzled. Uh, what's this outfit? Is it a Halloween party or what is it? Oh, it's, <laughs> no, it's, it's Casual Friday. Casual Friday? What does that mean? That means we just dress like we would at home. But you're not at home. No, but it is Casual Friday. So. Yeah, I know. You told me that already. What do you do on Casual Friday? Well, we just uh, come in and do our work, but we dress casually. I don't like it. Well, it's just one day of the week. I don't give a damn if it's uh, half a day a week. I don't like it. I'm here to change my will. A lot of money is involved. It's very important to me. Oh, well, we wouldn't treat you casually. Then why the hell are you dressed that it's way? Just... I want you to be on cutting edge, man, whenever you're handling my business. This is cutting edge. I don't need this crap. You look like a f***ing cowboy. You, you, you're J.R., huh? Joel Reynolds, right? Look, we, we you were... belong in Dallas, not no, L.A. I'm sorry, please. If, if, yeah, you should. If, just uh, understand uh, that we... Do... You should be sorry because you just lost my account. You go wrangle somebody else's. Thank you very much. If you come back on a Monday or a Tuesday. Ah, uh, thanks for listening. Thanks for calling. Hope you have a fun, feckless, casual Friday. Right? You're absolutely correct. Thank you, Ron. Man, Howard Burns. See you later, everybody. Hello. I must be going. I cannot stay. I came to say I must be going. I'm glad I came, but just the same, I must be going. I'll stay a week or two. I'll stay the summer through. But I am telling you, I must be away.